We are going to get an answer when we start filing defamation lawsuits. Wow. It's going to go to that? You well, the, that the media had feigned? Without question. She's been called a racist. She's been called a thief. Um, there are reasons defamation laws exist, and we plan to pursue that. Greetings and salutations, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about the Bike Karen updates because there looks like there should be some defamation lawsuits being filed, and I think it is incumbent upon all of us to direct the lawyers at where they should be filing those suits. Now, if you guys are unfamiliar with this story, let me give you a quick recap of the myth of Bike Karen. So, according to the myth proponents, which are numerous across the national media, Bike Karen was getting off her 12-hour shift as a physician's assistant at the neonatal healthcare center inside a hospital. Then, all of a sudden, due to evil white racism, Bike Karen saw five innocent young black men just trying to work out a city bike rental, and she decided to storm over to these men to rob them, and when they politely objected, when they said, Excuse me, ma'am, um, that's actually our bike. Could you please not take from us? She called for help and summoned white supremacy in an attempt to murder all of those young black men. Now, if that sounds ridiculous, if that sounds absurd, that's because it absolutely is. And what we ended up finding out was the obvious, that the so-called bike Karen actually paid for the bike, and she wasn't trying to rob five young black men. In fact, they were trying to rob her. And some of the things that you could notice from the initial video would give this away in an instance. For instance, when the video starts, this woman is already on the bicycle, so they're trying to grab it from her after she's already on it. Number two, you can see in the beginning of this video, this man's hand is over the code thing, which she would scan, which would allow her to get out of this bike rental for it to freeze up because he doesn't want to do that. Also, you can hear in the video when somebody comes up and tries to de-escalate the situation by suggesting they just relock the bike and then they go their separate ways. The young man doesn't want to do this. That's fine, you pulled it out. Uh, this is my bike, it's on my account. Yeah, Please move. All right, so why don't we set, reset the bike? I'm not resetting the bike. It's his, it's his, it's his. I'm going to pull it out on your account. No, you are active. On top of that, they are swearing at her repeatedly throughout this, getting aggressive with her, threatening her unborn baby, saying it's going to come out the R word for disabled while she's calling for help, and they're laughing at her. So the supposed alleged victims of evil white racism, evil white racists, are laughing their whole time as they're trying to participate in this robbery. On top of that, we have the receipts from the alleged bike Karen that shows that she was trying to rent the bike. The supposed victims, the alleged victims, we don't even know who they are. The media didn't even bother to run them down. Instead, they were far too busy doing things like doxing this woman's address, going to her apartment building, and telling all of her neighbors that she was an evil white racist. But before we get into that, I just want to say thank you so much to everybody who signed up over on my website, actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. Oh, give me the money. Give you, give me the money. Okay. And thank you to those of you who are listening via Apple, Spotify, or Google Podcasts. Really appreciate the support. Civil rights attorney Ben Crump tweeting, this is unacceptable. And she grossly tried to weaponize her tears to paint this man as a threat. This is exactly the type of behavior that has endangered so many black men in the past. No one answered at the woman's Brooklyn apartment or returned our calls for comment. This woman lives in her building. That woman lives in this building with me. Another neighbor who knows the woman in the video told us off camera he believes the incident is being blown out of proportion. So here you have NBC News. And by the way, I had to double check this because it is not NBC News' local affiliate. It's NBC News National going to this woman's door, knocking on the door, and then talking to her neighbors, showing them the videos and saying, hey, guess what? An evil white racist lives in your building. You should probably turn against her. And unsurprisingly, the neighbors that actually know her, the people who know how ridiculous this is, are afraid to talk on camera, but they're just stopping every random person and saying, hey, did you know this woman who hates black people is living here? She tried to rob five black men while pregnant. That's how much she hates them. What an evil white racist. Again, 
NBC News is doing this. NBC News. Now, I talked about earlier on in the video that but for the fact that we have the receipts and we know for sure that this woman was in the right, even if she was in the wrong and she assumed that this was her bike and not the bike she was actually looking for, the chances of her having any malicious intent, even in that worst case scenario, would be zero because it would have just been a mix-up that was an argument that got out of hand and but for the fact that it was filmed, put on the internet, and put by all these race hustlers in order to make money nobody would have paid any mind to it people get into disagreements all the time the thing is is that people are so desperate for evil white racism stories that even arguing with a black person whether or not you turned out to be right or not is a crime worthy of national coverage worthy of being doxxed worthy of nbc news going and harassing you and spreading lies to all your neighbors in and of itself. Now, it turns out she was 100% in the right. These guys were trying to steal her bicycle from her that she had justly rented, and we have the receipts for it, but, you know, why would we even talk about that? Why would we even acknowledge that far more likely possibility when we could gin up hysteria related to evil white racism? But this neighbor says the young men could have ended up in jail or worse. It's clearly like a Karen, a Central Park Karen. She's referring to the Central Park incident where a woman walking her dog called 911 on a black bird watcher. So number one, and I have to point this out, the Central Park Karen is also a hoax. That's also a fake story. If you look at Christian Cooper's original initial Facebook post, what you would find out is that he got into it with this woman because she was walking her dog allegedly without a leash. He didn't like that, so he told her to put the leash on the dog. She didn't like that, so they got into an argument. However, Christian Cooper, who has several complaints against him from other people in the park, pulled out dog treats after saying, well, if you're going to do whatever you want to do, I'm going to do whatever I want to do, and you're not going to like it. And he started calling the dog towards him. Now, did the Central Park Karen Amy Cooper act a little ridiculous? Sure, but again, you corner a woman in the park, pull out dog treats, and imply you're going to take her dog as a consequence for her not obeying you, and you tell me if that woman alone in the park every single time doesn't call the police on you regardless of race. In fact, but for Christian Cooper being a black person, this would have been a standard arrest that guy kind of situation, but it blew up into national news, and then Christian Cooper, of all the ridiculous things, was offered a bird watching show on National Geographic. She thinks that she's viewed as a victim because she's white. And she thinks that that's obvious in this America that we all live in. Yeah, no, completely backwards and absurd. The only reason, period, point blank, people care about minor arguments with black people is because we have a country that is so desperate for black victimization and they can't look to crimes because they just don't exist that we're now down to petty arguments cut out of context and ridiculous leaps in logic in order to get there. Now, NBC News, absolute trash, absolute garbage, but it gets much worse. We covered the Rayshad Richie thing, which by the way, when I shot my original video and took the screenshot, had 105 dislikes to 13,000 likes, and now that is up to 35,000 dislikes compared to those same 13,000 likes. Nice work. That's all I'm going to say. But there's actually a damage report segment where John Iderola of the Young Turks and Emma Vigilant of It's a Bourgeois Attitude to Not Want to Get Beat Up by Insane Homeless People on the Train also had ridiculously terrible and defamatory takes. Let's get into that. A video has gone viral appearing to show a uh, white woman making an incredibly dramatic scene in New York City after she apparently, according to all that we know, tried to claim a b rental bicycle uh, that a black man had already paid for. So here's the first part of that video, take a look. Oh, no, no, please help me, please help me, please help me. So in that section of the video, you see the yelling for help as if you desperately need help, which is a thing we see in videos like this. John, she yelled for help because these people were attempting to rob her. And again, I pointed it out earlier, but you could see it quite clearly in what is next to John. His hand is covering the QR code. Why is he doing that? Why are they against them relocking the bike? Perhaps 
I don't know if this would be shocking to you, John, the five young black men are more likely to be trying to rob the pregnant woman than the pregnant woman who just got off a 12-hour shift is likely to be going into a group of five young black men to rob them. Maybe that's the circumstance that we're dealing with. Maybe if we crunch the numbers, one of these things would be far more likely than the other. Maybe one of these examples, the theory that you're positing, has never happened in the history of ever, and the other one happens all the time. But no, uh, she's just calling for help as if she's in danger when, you know, a bunch of men are physically assaulting her, what the hell is wrong with this woman? <laughs> yeah, look, it's, it's impossible in these sorts of situations. We weren't there. We don't know everything that happened beforehand. But it does appear that her tears came on very fast and then disappeared even faster. We weren't there. We don't know what happened before the video. Well, before the video, she got on the bike and then these guys approached her and tried to steal the bike. And we have the receipts that show that she rented the bike. And this idea that based on some low quality video, you're going to tell me whether or not she was getting emotional or not, or whether or not there was enough tears for you to find it adequate or not is ridiculous and absurd. Pregnant women have some mood swings and it's a bit of a stressful situation when you're being robbed by multiple men. It looked like, you know, what we've seen in instances like this, you have the racial component of, um, you know, a white woman attempting to elicit some sort of response by kind of over exaggerating the situation that's actually happening. It's like a white woman, you know, we've seen this before, trying to overly emotionally not be robbed by a group of black men. And it's just an exaggeration. What is she so worried about? Has there ever been an instance ever in the history of ever where a black person, male, committed a violent crime against a white woman, female. Has it ever happened? No, absolutely not. What's far more likely is that this woman was trying to rob five black men. That's definitely more likely to be the possibility for sure. And you could tell by the distress in the situation that she's exaggerating because the people who are actively trying to rob her are laughing at her and hurling epithets at her. And that's not stressful for a woman at all. No way. I was um, just thinking of this woman. Yes. Exactly. But, uh, like sort right. of implying like I'm in danger, everyone do what you do when a white woman is in danger and a black man's around do that thing. I don't know this person. I don't know. I'm just expressing this is sort of what we've seen in videos like this. So they show the clip in the background in the B-roll of the Central Park Karen. I already talked about how that is yet another one of these hoaxes. And they're like, oh, look at all the dots that I'm connecting. This is just what white women do whenever they're about to be robbed or their dog is threatened to be stolen from them or this bike situation and they're pregnant. They have the audacity, the caucasity, the Karenicity, as Rayshawn Richie would say, to call for help rather than just take the robbery as the reparations that they are owed to these black criminals. Now, look, it matters because if he did pay for that bike and she takes it, supposedly according to their terms of service, he could be charged up to $1,200 plus tax. Yeah, John, so what happened was is that she paid for the bike and he was trying to take it. So she would have been on the hook for $1,200 plus tax in case you're curious about what actually happened about what was always more likely to be what happened in this situation yes that's why she was upset because people were robbing her after a 12-hour shift she's six months pregnant and that would have also ended up potentially costing her twelve hundred dollars so yeah john good good thing you put out that number for us good thing you, you you put out that interpretation for us if it's his bike it's his bike even if she wants it to be her bike well it's not his bike it was her bike she paid for it and it's hers even if he wants to steal it from her even if you want to make a racial narrative about it it's definitely hers john emma what do you think i mean i i ride city bikes which is clearly what they're they're uh uh, using there and it's not that hard to figure out if you're doing it on the app it'll say which bike and which it, it'll have a label at the docking station for which bike is she's in reference or they're both referencing so honestly it should have been pretty clear to her it was pretty clear to her emma it was her bike and by the way she's right the app will tell you that's why she went over there because you know pregnant women don't typically go over and try to rob five young black men but if you notice the guy was covering the code so she couldn't see it in the beginning of the video it's right there clear and obvious for everybody to see but i'm glad you brought that up emma that she definitely knew she was with the right bike she was confirmed by the receipts and this guy by the way in the wind no nowhere to be found it's not that hard to figure out if you're doing it on the app it'll say which bike and which 
it, it'll have a label at the docking station for which bike is she's in reference or they're both referencing. So honestly, it should have been pretty clear to her. Hey guys, editing Sean here. Now I know that some people out there are again being very strategically skeptical about whether or not her two receipts prove anything, but I just want to point out that there is a still image from the videotape that shows the number of the bike in question, and it actually matches 100% the number on the bike receipt. As you can see, the bike that was originally at issue, the one that ended up getting relocked, was 560-3915. And on the receipt, what do we see? 560-3915. So to be clear, for those of you who are as dumb as Emma Viglin, it is proven beyond any shadow of a doubt that the pregnant woman was not trying to rob the five black men of the rentable bike. But I, she's in work clothes, so yeah. my first thought was, is she drunk? Like, is she, I don't know, but she just seemed really out of it. And I, she's straight up racist, totally. But there was, like, she wasn't really making a ton of sense, which was bizarre. Please sue Emma Vigiland. Lawyer, I'm telling you, this is the perfect woman to sue. She comes from a rich family. $40,000 a year for her high school tuition. Please sue her, the daughter of wealthy lawyers. She is a definite good mark. She just said that the six-month pregnant woman who was in work clothes came off as drunk, definitely racist, and wasn't making any sense. Uh, Emma, I know this might be complicated for you because you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth, but typically, regular people, they work 12-hour shifts in the medical field. They sometimes feel tired, and sometimes when you're tired and you're just trying to get home after a 12-hour shift, you go to get on a little bike so you could ride home, and then people try to rob you, and then you get upset. And I know to you she wasn't making any sense because in the fantasy world that you live in, where all the black people you grew up around worked for your family, Family, they would never, ever, ever say anything to you or look you directly in the eye. But in the real world, when somebody's trying to rob you, regardless of if they're black or white and you're a woman, that scares you. That's something that bothers you. And that is an uncomfortable situation to be in. Try to lower yourself to the actual people who have to work in the real world, Emma, and understand this possibility. And they were like, this is my bike. Just go to the other bike um, the stand, the the little uh, docking station, and get your own. It's not that difficult. Yeah, Emma, it was her bike though, and you remember that whole thing about the twelve hundred dollar fine. Do you, do you remember that? Yeah, that's what she would have been facing had she just turned it over to the thieves. In fact, they actually suggested in the video, if you recall, Emma. That they just relock the bike. That's fine. You pulled it out. Uh, this is my bike. It's on my account. Yeah, Please move. All right. So why don't we set reset the bike? I'm not resetting the bike. It's his. It's his. It's his. It's his. It's his. Reset it. I'm gonna pull it out on your account. You're an actor. Redock it, and then they can go their separate ways without an argument. And that was rejected by the thief. So just go to the other side and all that. That's what she eventually did after the bike was eventually locked. So that's what she wanted to do. That's what the people who were not trying to get into an argument, not hurling epithets at a pregnant woman, were trying to do. But you know, it's not that hard. Oh, geez, golly gee, Willikers. This woman's definitely racist, possibly even drunk. I'm Emma Vigilant. I'll just make up whatever the hell I want because I want to be the absolute absolute most virtuous but but yeah i mean the white woman uh fake crying thing i i could do it too but uh like uh, and then you just turn it off um it's mm -hmm. but it, it, <laughs> it's convenient i would not yeah. i would not deploy it in this kind of situation i would not deploy it in this situation i would just get robbed because honestly it's a bourgeois attitude to not want an innocent angel to steal from you honestly what's wrong with you just pay the 1200 dollars fine because that person is stealing that city bike because he's actually aladdin he's gonna take that bike home and he's gonna eat it he's gonna barbecue the tires and i'm a vigilant i'm so so virtuous i'm the most virtuous person of all time but that's what that's what the, like when you mentioned the central park um bird watching thing that was exactly the same situation there too yeah it was in that it was a hoax in that christian cooper admitted to threatening to take this woman's dog and obviously if you threaten to take a woman's dog alone in the park obviously she's gonna call the police that's gonna happen to you 100 percent of the time regardless of the races involved and you see how even liberal cities like new york very divided among along racial lines and um, white women often, and it's a tale as old as time, exploiting their perceived innocence. Go back to Emmett Till um, for a deeply racist end. So first of all, I just wanna point out that Emmett Till, not innocent, 
The idea that Carolyn Bryant made up her allegations comes from an author who years after the interview made this claim when he was trying to sell a book. Now, he recorded the interview with Carolyn Bryant, and that part of the interview coincidentally was not recorded. Also, there were other witnesses at the time that the interview was conducted, and neither one of them said that Carolyn Bryant did admit to this being a fake story or anything like that. None of the evidence shows that it was a fake story. The point of Emmett Till was not innocent angel was killed. The point of Emmett Till was that he was a young man he was a child that was brutally murdered his image was in the paper and that level of violence produced change in the united states of america so this myth making around him is absolutely absurd and ridiculous this idea that white women are using their perceived innocence for racist ends the racist end of trying to rob black men of bicycles because what we definitely know is happening in the United States of America if you crunch the numbers is that black men are getting their rentable bicycles stolen by white women weaponizing their innocence sure Emma definitely something that we see all the time um for a deeply racist ends and, and this at least on its face, appears to be one of those cases. I'm, I'm sorry, deeply racist ends of stealing rentable bikes from innocent angels that are swearing at you, shoving you, and talking about how your baby's gonna come out disabled and all of that. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, Emma. That's that's definitely an accurate reflection of reality and not your fantasy world. Yeah, she, as far as I have seen, hasn't put out any kind of statement. We don't know her. We don't know what she's said and done in her past. We don't know what she believes about anything. We know what it looks like and it doesn't look good. That's what we know. Um, she says in the video that she's pregnant. Um, I, I don't that, that doesn't rule out the possibility that she she could be drunk. It seems like mm-hmm. probably not in that case. It looks like she was in her scrubs. She works at a hospital, by the way, uh, Bellevue, I believe, which says that it is looking into it now. So I talk all the time about strategic skepticism from people on the left, and this is a perfect example of this. Emma Vigilant is just making stuff up. She's making up racism. It doesn't exist. She's making up this idea that white women are stealing rentable bikes from black people. It's never happened in the history of ever. She's making up the idea that pregnant white women go into groups of five of black people in order to rob them. Again, never happened in the history of ever. And John comes in and he's like, well, you know, she's actually pregnant and like wearing work clothes. But because it's something that you asserted that's bad about this woman, I'm going to say that it doesn't make it impossible that she wasn't also drunk. So this woman working a 12 hour shift was also knocking them back while six months pregnant thinking, you know what I'm going to do? As soon as I get off of work, I'm going to go rob five black men. That's really what they're presenting. Absurd. Insane. A white woman was caught on camera attempting to steal a city bike from a young black man in New York City. She grossly tried to weaponize her tears to paint this man as a threat. This is exactly the type of behavior that has endangered so many black men in the past. Now, the lawyer actually has gone out and he's done some interviews with local media. Take very good note of that and Fox News, the only national outlet that appears to be covering it. And he's addressed the absolute stupidity in comments from people like Emma Vigland, John Iderola, Rayshad Ritchie, and Ben Crump, and all these other race-hustling absolute scumbag liars who try to sell you on the idea that pregnant white women coming off a 12-hour shift are looking to rob five young black men. The whole narrative that, like, she stole the bike, it is patently wrong. Humphrey's attorney, Justin Marino, says she paid for the bike first, and he produced receipts of her purchase. And he claims in her condition, she would never try to fight over a bike. So the lawyer goes on local news, and he presents the receipts to show not only the rental that ended up being canceled, which is the bike that they're fighting over, but the rental that she eventually took, because unlike the lies that Emma Viglin's trying to tell, she was trying to redock this bike and go to another one and leave. Do you think any pregnant woman in their right mind would jump on another young man's bike and like just scoot away while they're six months pregnant. And then he says the most obvious thing in the world in that heavy New York accent, and I absolutely love it, so I have to play it again for you. Do you think any pregnant woman in their right mind would jump on another young man's bike and like just scoot away while they're six months pregnant? That is exactly precisely right. 
what woman, separate all the races from this situation, at six months pregnant, is going to just randomly, for no reason, jump on a bike that is already being rented, allegedly, by an innocent angel, young teenage man? When has that ever happened in the history of ever? A spokesperson for New York City Health and Hospital says that Comrie is now on leave pending a review of the incident. Her attorney says they have no beef with the young man, but object to what Ben Crump wrote. It's appalling that you know, like race, you know, is somehow like imputed as that being the issue here. Now, I appreciate the lawyer paying lip service to the fact that race shouldn't be involved in this story. But again, the only reason an argument blows up into national news is because people like Emma Viglin, John Iderola, Rayshad Ritchie, Benjamin Crump, and the national news media, including NBC News, are desperate for instances of evil white racism. Obviously, random arguments between people should not be blown up in this way. Obviously, a pregnant woman is not robbing five black teenagers, and it's absurd to suggest that. Obviously, she was in the right, but of course, we all have to pretend like these things were equally possible, and this was a rational response, and I'm glad that this guy is taking action. I'm glad he has a GoFundMe, and they're looking to sue, because this woman can't go back to her apartment. She's being harassed. Remember, NBC News doxed her neighbors. Rayshad Rixie went after her employer. All these nasty people tried to ruin this woman's life all based on a lie, a lie that was insanely obvious from the jump. So yeah, I'm going to link the GoFundMe for the victim, the pregnant woman who is being harassed and had her husband doxxed and had all of these various attacks waged against her for her legal fund. However, I really wish that they were on Gifts and Go because I feel like GoFundMe at some point in time when this gets enough funding and attention is going to decide to donate the money to the Justice Smollett Hate Hoax Association or something like that since GoFundMe is absolute trash. I really want to know what you guys think. I want to know if you believe we're going to get some positive resolutions from these stories and maybe some retractions. I think they'll be hilarious. Somebody looking into the camera at NBC News and saying, listen, you know how we unskeptically reported that a six months pregnant woman was going into a crowd of black teenagers in order to rob a rentable bike from them? Turns out that was not the case. Turns out we probably shouldn't have doxxed that woman. Turns out we probably shouldn't have harassed her neighbors and defamed her. Uh, d d we we're weird how we made that assumption. I would love to see that retraction. But again, let me know if you think that's even a possibility. If you like this video, show them by leaving a like. Subscribe for more content. Follow me on all my social media. Support me via the support links in the description of this video this has been me talking about bike karen yet again till next time